My name is She, She Me, and today is that day that the Lord has made, so that we rejoice and be glad in it. So Penyauko, rejoice, because God has given you a chance to see this time. Sindio. So guys, as I've told you and on this series, it's just about a thousand ways of getting jobs in Dubai. Now, who else can give you the example? If not, the guest that I have, yeah? Guys, if I give my story, it's only one. Yeah, it's only one, but there's a thousand ways, thousands and thousands of ways to get a job in Dubai. And so, because that is what we're just going to be doing, I'll introduce to you this lady who is, oh my God, I don't know what words to even say and describe her, but let me give her a chance to explain who she is so that we can get to know her. Cindy, so guys, don't leave, stay there. This could be one of the ways that you can use and you find yourself working for one of those very big companies you never know so just sit there wait and hear from this here's the guest yeah so karibu tell us what is your name where you're from and um yeah first tell us that all right my name is charity mm -hmm. and i'm from mombasa mombasa kenya mm -hmm. and working in dubai i'm a mother i'm married and I'm also a gospel um, musician. How did you know about Dubai? All right. Mm. Dubai, um, I had some friends many years ago back who were actually working here in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And uh, they really inspired me because they were just young ladies mm -hmm. who were so passionate and they really wanted like to make it in life. And when they used to come back home, they used to tell us of the opportunities here in Dubai. Mm -hmm. So that is how I got like the interest um, to also take the step and also come to Dubai. And uh, because all of us come here because we want life to be better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just took the step of faith mm -hmm. and here I am. Yes. Wow. So, so how, how did you plan it? Did you save? How did you, how did you get your visa? What about the tickets? How, like financially, how was it? All right, mine is actually a testimony mm. because um, 2015 is when I came to Dubai. Mm. Okay, I had come 2010, then I went back, and then I came like 2015. Now I've been here six years. Wow. Yeah, so the 2015, mm. uh, when I came, I had actually previously been doing business back home. Okay. And then initially business was doing well, mm -hmm. but it reached a point where I had to start like taking loans mm. to um to support the business wow yeah mm -hmm. but things really became hard and tough to a point where i used to find like i have a i mean i have a loan to pay mm -hmm. i don't have stock mm -hmm. and i'm not seeing the money so it became a struggle so after a very long time of struggling i decided to take a step of faith mm -hmm. so during this time we used to have um, a chama uh, where I used to work, we had ladies who were doing like chama, mm. and we had developed our chama in a way that we used to take loans mm. and uh, pay like 10% just within us, not outside, just the ladies were in the chama. Mm. So I took a step of faith mm. after you know when I felt enough is enough. Mm. So I just took the hundred thousand and I told God, It's just me and you, you just have to go before me and mm. make my way. So I came to Dubai with a one month visa, mm -hmm. I tarmacked. I looked for a job, it was not all that easy. Sorry, just mm -hmm. before you, uh, the tarmacking part, okay. what, were, what was your expectations and what did you, like what did you find, the reality, how did you even get here, who picked you up from the airport? Okay, I had some friends who were already staying here, mm. so they connected me like to a bed space. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and at least some of the friends they guided me like where to go, you know, like where to go drop my CV or mm -hmm. just some few basic things. Mm -hmm. But as I continued like tarmacking, then you get to get ideas, you meet people, mm -hmm. they tell you where interviews are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So slowly by slowly you start knowing your whereabouts. So how was your schedule like on a day that you're doing the, the tarmacking? What time would you wake up and? Mm -hmm. I used to wake up at five and by six I was out. Wait, five guys, five. <laughs> five unenda tamaking, put after a job. Mm -hmm. Because I always wanted to be among the first. If it's a walking, mm -hmm. I hated the long queues. Mm -hmm. So I want to be among the first and then I finish and that's it. 
because I always believe by the time interviewers see so many people, they're already tired. Mm. But when they're fresh, they can probably make a better decision. I think we have a tip there already, guys. So Charity, you've told us about tarmacking. Probably there's someone there. Adri, what really is this tarmacking? You know the tarmacking we do back home is not the same here. So just in your own words, how exactly did you do your tarmacking? Okay. All right, tarmacking is where like you write your CV go around taking it to different companies different places if it's working uh, interviews you go with your cv you physically drop your mm -hmm. your cv mm -hmm. you just go out there looking for a job when you have your ready cvs what are some of the interviews you worked in mm -hmm. and what exactly did you see okay like some of the things that i saw for working there's this one particular working i went to mm -hmm. And uh, there were so many criteria that they were using to like to reduce the numbers. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, the very first thing was dressing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people go for walking, they are so casual, it's like they don't care, they don't look serious. But this was the first thing. Anybody who was not smartly dressed, that was the first disqualification. Sorry, may I ask, what job was it that you were going? What was the interview all about? That interview was actually a hotel interview. Okay, so yeah. it was all about hospitality. Industry. Hospitality, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, so basically, I think that is one very important thing that I learned. Mm -hmm. First impression. Mm -hmm. How do you look? Because that is what either will uh, enable you to go to the next stage mm -hmm. or not. The way you look really matters. Mm -hmm. And I saw some people, they just didn't care. Some with slippers, mm -hmm. the way they are dressed, you know, like when you're going for an interview as in you really 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 need the job and mm. there's so many competitors out there mm. so you have to try as much as possible to outshine meskia yeah you have to outshine let's say like how, what are what were the nationalities that came because this is dubai we know that in dubai mm. there is quite a lot of uh, culture mm. there's a lot of different people from different nationalities mm. yeah so what exactly who are the people that you met on that time i saw a lot of kenyans mm -hmm. a lot mm. people have really come here to look for jobs so we we were so many mm -hmm. although we had like the other nationality but i think we were, in my view we were mm. so many wow. we were so many ah yeah so did you go through that interview Yes. Did you get any questions? What are the questions they asked you? Okay, they will ask you about your previous experience. They will also like uh, ask you some of the things like what are your weaknesses, mm. what are your strengths, and then they will ask you like uh, just few questions based on the job, uh, the job position that you're actually applying for, just to try and see whether you have any clue or any information about exactly or what you're going about. Experience about. Yes. Do they ask for your papers, like your college papers and uh, all this? Okay, they don't ask for like the documentation at that point, but they will ask you about your experience. Do you have like any certificates? Have you gone mm. to school because of this? Mm. Yeah. So basically what they're asking is your CV. Just yeah. explain yourself exactly. about what you have written in your CV. Mm. So in this case, you can tell us that it's important to know what you have written on your CV. Exactly. exactly. How many CVs did you have? Because I've had different stories of different people saying they had to make a, a security job CV, a hospitality CV, um, customer care. So which one? Which one did you... How, how did you go about that? <laughs> Actually, hmm. what I... Okay, mostly um, they want to see like, um, like a good flow of the things that you've done. Okay, in relation to that kind of job. Hmm. But at some point... Hmm. I intentionally tried to do that, mm. but I saw that this is very confusing <laughs> because I remembered one interview. <laughs> uh -huh. I didn't know it CV dropped, mm -hmm. and they called you. Yeah. So um, when I got there, I was like, "Oh my god!" So which one did I even drop here? Yeah. Oh, you know. Mm -hmm. Good thing is that immediately the interviewer came. He put the CV on the on the table. So I quickly peeped and so oh, and you're I like, said, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wow, okay. Uh -huh. So after all that, I thought, no, let me just make one CV where I mm. go everywhere and I just say the same things, you know? Mm. That worked for me. Wow. People yeah. are different. Mm. There are people who can be able to manage and see what CV they just need to know which one. Mm. People they've given a different uh, picture of a different, every every CV got a picture different. Mm. So Kiona mm. and your, oh, essentially you got a job. Yes. What? Where were you working? 
Okay, I was working in a customer service. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way I got this job, I will also say it was a miracle. Mm -hmm. Because actually, um, we were so many people doing the, the interview. By then, those times, they used, people really used to crowd for, for, for walk-ins. Mm. And uh, by the time I was being interviewed, I was number 20. Okay. Uh-huh. So they first do, um, the one that, since it was customer service, we actually did an exam, mm -hmm. a written exam mm -hmm. of an aptitude test. Wow. Mm -hmm. This is where like, they want to try and test your IQ. They mm -hmm. give you like some English questions mm -hmm. and some uh, mathematics, just mm -hmm. to see how your brain works. Mm -hmm. eh? Just simple, and then they give you like a pass mark. Mm -hmm. The pass mark was 85. Okay. Was this, was the questions there, you choose letters like, like the answer is either B, A, C, exactly. or, okay, yes. that is, is okay. Kenya, I think they're easy. Mm. We do them a lot. Mm. And you know, you can always do the elimination method. Mm. Okay, so how did you perform in that? <laughs> Very good. I passed, I think I got 90 or something. Yeah, I got 90. Yeah, yeah. see, there's nothing I think to worry about that exam. Because mm. I've also done quite a lot of exams mm. like this, especially when I was now joining current uh, occupation where I am. Mm. We also do that test, mm. yeah? And I don't think it's anything to worry. I'm not what to do tell a Kenyan. No. Out there. Uh -huh. But it's not hard. Mm. As it, it's, it just needs, what they're looking for is your ability to think fast. Mm -hmm. And also because they give you like a time frame. Mm. And then these are just basic questions. They want to test your English. Do mm. you understand a statement? And mathematically, if you're told like from this distance to this distance, it takes this amount of minutes. From Which this is like distance class four. to this. Mm -hmm. But then it is just simple things mm, wow yeah, it's on the so phone. currently she's working in a call center mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so guys able to ski how did she how was her interview there because she she has a story i, I remember you telling us a testimony mm -hmm. just in a nutshell mm -hmm. tell us how did you get that job how many people were in the interview how many people were picked mm -hmm. eh. okay. um so what i did was that the following morning i rose up very early mm -hmm. to go for this interview it was actually on a saturday mm. i rose up very early mm. by the time i was registering myself i was number 300. oh my god so you can imagine the others had come like what time yes what? i was so shocked when i got there i was like oh my god mm. what is this then um yeah the people the number of people that came that day it was 1200 mm. as they recorded mm. And uh, so what happened was that people are being taken in batches mm -hmm. to go for the interview because now the crowd is too big. Mm. And the first test, the first round was aptitude test again. Mm -hmm. So we did the aptitude test mm. and only five people passed. Mm? Yeah. Out of how many thousand? As in, in my batch, we were being taken oh, like okay. in like how many but How many were you in your batch? We were like 20 of us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. So what happened was that, um, so they called all the names. Mm. And then there was this one name that this, uh, one of the guys who were doing the interview, who gave mm. us the papers for the interview. Mm. He was pronouncing it, but we couldn't even understand what name he was trying to call. Mm -hmm. So um, nobody claimed the name. Mm -hmm. So when I was walking out, mm -hmm. I just asked him, can I see that name that you're trying to pronounce? Mm -hmm. When I looked, it was actually my name. So I actually almost missed it. Hmm? I almost. Connie, how are you mentioning it. your name? <laughs> <laughs> it was not something like charity. It was oh. something like something else. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I thought, uh -uh, let me just ask. Mm. Oh my God. Now that is the, by the end of the day, after all of you have been picked already, um, it was just your batch. Now this is the first round. Mm -hmm. The 20. Mm. I said, they're okay. The other people who came pre uh, before us, because you remember I was number 300 by the time I was registering. So mm. guys were going in batches. Mm. So this was the, like the first round. Mm. So now after I managed to know that this was my name, so we were told to come in the afternoon for a second interview. Mm -hmm. So second interview, we were interviewed by two, um, two um, HRs. Mm -hmm. Then after that, we were told that you'll be called. Always you're told, You'll be called. You'll be called. You'll be called. You'll be wow. Called. So in the course of that week, the following week now, mm. on a Wednesday, mm. so I received a call now for a third interview. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just have to go through so many interviews by the time you get a job. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the competition is so high. And like, what what are some of the few questions they asked you? 
okay they will ask you things like what are your weaknesses mm -hmm. what are your strengths mm -hmm. they want to know like in your previous job the experiences mm -hmm. what were you doing how like for example in customer service mm -hmm. like dealing with customer complaints how mm -hmm. did you deal with Mm -hmm. a customer can't complain they ask you to like give us one scenario mm -hmm. of how you dealt with a customer complain practical things guys i have heard about this so many times and i've also personally experienced they really want your experience much more if i'm wrong correct me mm -hmm. but some of these questions they ask you cannot be actually things that you learn just in class mm. these are things you have to experience personally Cindy. Yeah. and then some of the things i've also noticed exactly. probably it's just how you talk Cindy. Exactly. how you communicate with your guests and mm. all that so probably that is what came through for you exactly have you worked in a customer service before in kenya um actually i was doing business so that was my own See, that yeah. is what experience, you that is yeah. that was your own experience tell us some of your the experience your experience at work some of the challenges that you go through mm -hmm. in the place that you're working and for a while a very long time actually mm -hmm. i was the only like kenyan mm -hmm. or uh, black nationality mm -hmm. in that uh, department mm -hmm. so sometimes it was very challenging because you find like people um like to group I mean, among the, the their own nationality, mm. so you feel like you are the odd one out. You feel mm. left out. You feel like you're not a part of them. Mm. So it was quite a very challenging uh, moment. Mm. But I'm grateful to God. At least right now, we have. I mean, they have added quite more people mm. from uh, the African nationality, from the African community. Like mm. we have some from Kenya, Zimbabwe. Sudan, wow. Somalia. So, so at really least nice. now you feel like there's some more people in your yes. world. Wow, wow. It's really nice. That could be you. Yeah. You're, really nice. you're called into a company that probably you're the first one who is African. Mm. But how do you settle in? So how are mm. you how are you coping with that? Like like okay, it was not as easy, mm. but I just used to tell myself I came here mm. to work. So I come, mm. do my job, go home. Wow. Yeah. You came here to work, do your job, mm -hmm. and go home. Mm -hmm. Charity, you're also a musician. Ebu, tell us, how do you manage to do your music and you're still here? Well, I would say like uh, most of my songs, mm -hmm. I write them when I'm here, and some I actually had written them when I was back home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I go to Kenya, I normally do my recording in Kenya. Oh, wow. So guys, I'll be linking her music down there. I, I've used it in a few of her, uh, uh, of, in a few in the um, on Facebook, and I'm telling you, her songs really are blessing. They bless me. So if you want to be blessed as well, check out the links that I'm going to be putting down there, and let's support let's support this uh, this beautiful girl. You know, talk to someone there who is at home. Um, we normally find people back at home. Sometimes they keep saying, um, "Help me look for a job in Dubai. Connect me to somebody." And with the number of years I've been in Dubai, to be quite honest, it's not easy to look for somebody a job mm -hmm. in Dubai. Mm -hmm. You have to either come through a, a, an agent that is a reliable agent, or you have to come physically and look for a job here, because they will call you for interviews. Mm -hmm. How will they? You know you can't look for somebody for a job you have to be here either physically because they need to interview you they need to see you because here it's not like back home mm -hmm. here everything is just straightforward mm -hmm. it's not about knowing somebody there's nothing like that here mm -hmm. everything is very straightforward all right um there's also one thing i'd like to advise somebody out there when you come to dubai and you put in that job it's good for you to write exactly why what you want to achieve we all come from home because probably we had challenges back at home and we want to achieve some something here so write down those things from the beginning write down what you want to achieve what are your goals what are you planning and then begin to work towards those things uh, the bible says that write down the vision so that whoever reads it may run it's very important for you to write down those things you want to achieve so that they can be a guide to you so that anytime you feel like you're losing your way you always go back to those things and find your track and then another thing i'd like to say be wise from day one so that at the end of the day it will be rewarding you'll see that my years that have been working they were not wasted because at some point sometimes if you don't put all these things in place you find that when you look back a lot of money passed through your hands but it was used wrongly and now you start regretting you go back home depressed 
because you had money at one point but yet it all went like that it was not used for the right purpose so write your um, your the things that you want to achieve have the right friends and also be wise when you're giving your money back at home be very wise so that you'll not be working for people and leave yourself you who is laboring without something thank you so much charity i really appreciate i hope you out there who's watching us have learned something and i hope it's going to help you into maybe broadening your mind and ways of thinking so guys stay tuned that is just one of the ways she came here to dubai let's hear of another person next time so stay tuned